I'm going to talk to you today about the how to experience the banner years of your life in 2020, 2020, and 2021. And uh, we started a series called 52. Everybody say 52. Oh, come on, like you had a Red Bull. 52? 52 to a new you. God can do a quick work in your life. God can move you forward faster. A day of favor can be worth a lifetime of labor. What should have taken many years, God can do in a few weeks. What should have taken months, God can do in a moment, in a day. God, I believe, wants to show up, show off, and show out in your life. You may have been through some discouragement difficult times and troubles. Banner, for, banner years are not trouble-free years, but they are years of favor. And what the enemy is meant for bad, I prophesy and declare over you, God will turn it for good as you honor and as you trust in him. Our theme verse for this year is found in Psalm 8411. It says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor. Everybody say favor. Favor and honor, no good thing does he withhold from those who trust him or those who walk uprightly. Favor is supernatural prov provision and special treatment given as a gift from God. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, favor is for life. God's favors for your life and God's favors for every area of your life. God's favors for you spiritually, physically emotionally, financially, and relationally. Every area of your life, God wants you to get a new dream and vision, and he wants to do something great in and through uh, your life. And some people say, well, you know, I just don't know that the, that the Bible works, and I've tried this, and I'm struggling. And can I just encourage you to not be discouraged? And, you know, sometimes we just got to get honest with ourselves. Now, how many of you sing in the shower? Where's my people that you sing in the shower? Come on, wait, you sing. Come on, where are you? So many, and you sing good in the shower. It's amazing. Sing, sing, I don't sing in the shower because I'm normally out of bed uh, before my wife. And if I sing and wake her up, <laughs> she will will injure me. So I don't sing in the shower, but I shave my head in the shower. There's a way that bulb becomes so beautiful. So in the shower, uh, the other day I was, I was, uh, I always do electric razor, and then I do a, a new Bic razor every single time. And I was shaving my head, and I noticed it was still rough and it wasn't working. I was frustrated. I was like, "This is a brand new razor blade. Why isn't this working?" I did it again, and I, and it went on for about a good 20 to 30 seconds. And then I realized <laughs> I hadn't taken the lid off it. Come on, somebody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, oh, okay, that's that's how that works, right there. Now here's the reality in your life and mine. So often, we're like, oh, God's word doesn't. Listen, you got to open the word and open your heart, get it on the inside, because God's word works every time it's tried and applied. And if you'll get it on the inside of you, it's sharper than a two edged sword. It'll do a great work in and through you, and God will take you to a whole nother level. Come on, are you ready to go there? Come on, you ready? So we're going to open up the word, and we're going to allow God to speak to us over these next few moments. And I just want to recap for a few moments. Last week, we talked about revival. And, and the, the process of banner years is first you need to have a revival. And that word uh, revive, it was, uh, it was on our t-shirts, on some of our swag. And, and here's what it means. It means to awaken, to, to, to awaken, to, to, uh, to bring a, a, a fresh move, to bring back to life. And we said a revival doesn't start and your spouse, and your children, and your co-workers, and your neighbors. It's easier to see, to see the faults in others than it is to look in the mirror and to see what's going on in our own lives, in our own world. It's easy to pass the blame of why this is happening and why that is happening. But you know what? It's a whole other thing to say, you know what, God? It doesn't matter why it's happening, but today I'm believing right now that revival and awakening starts not in someone else, but in me. And God, do a great work do a quick work, do an awesome work in and through my life. If you want banner years in 2020, it begins with revival on the inside of you. God revive me. Do something on the inside of my life. So we were talking about Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king of Persia, and, and, and he had a very important job. He wasn't simply the wine taster. He had great authority. He, he, he led the secret service, and he was tr a trusted advisor to the king. And Nehemiah heard about his homeland. 
He heard about the walls of Jerusalem that were broken down. The people of God had begun to come back, and the temple was rebuilt, all these things, but the walls were broken down. There was no safety, and, and, and it meant they were, they were scourged or embarrassed. They had the one true God, but they didn't have any protection. When he heard about the problem, he said, you know what? I need to do something about it. He didn't go into Facebook. He didn't go into complain mode. He didn't call up and text a bunch of friends and, and, and all those things. He just said, you know what, God, I need to do something about that. And I believe prophetically over your life that God's going to awaken you and revive you the things that you see in your community, where you work, in your family, in your life. And, and when it happens, don't say, you know what, the church should do something about that. Can I tell you, you are the church. God's equipped you and called you, and you're going to do something about that. There's some walls that God wants to rebuild in and around you and in people's lives. And God is going to use you. Revival starts in me. Come on. Do you believe that? Say it with me. Say revival starts in me. Now, Nehemiah said, I, I need to do something about this. So he prayed. He got a burden. He got a dream on the inside. And we're going to pick up on this story in verse 8 of chapter 1. And I'm going to take you through chapter 2 quickly. And I'm going to give you a series of thoughts uh, that are going to help you as we talk about our theme for today, which is this. Reimagine. God wants to give you fresh vision for your life. Now, to, have, uh, to imagine something means to form a mental picture or a mental image of something not actually present to the senses to think or to believe, to reimagine or to imagine, it means to imagine again in a different way. Albert Einstein once said, your imagination is a preview of life's coming attractions. Now, imagination are good. You need that to get a preferred picture to believe for the future in your heart so that vision can come alive and your spirit. Now, imaginations can be good and lead to vision and, and an abundant life, or they can, be, they can be bad. They can lead to lots of discouragement. That's why the Bible says that we even need to cast down certain imaginations. Now, I want to encourage you right now to say, you know what, God, do a fresh work in, in me, and I believe that God's going to allow you to see things that you weren't able to see before. That's what happened in Nehemiah's life. Everything was good. He was going along. Then all of a sudden, he was awakened to a need, and he immediately said, I'm going to do something about that. Now, in 52 days, what couldn't happen over many, uh, many years and generations, in 52 days, Nehemiah led a group of people to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, and God did a quick work. Everybody say, quick work. And I believe that God can do that in your life as well. But first, you got to see it. So I'm, I'm holding something up here. This is... Well, you, you know what this is. This is when you go to get your, your uh, eyes checked at the, eyes do uh, the eye doctor. And I remember when I was in my early 20s, I had to get glasses, and then I just decide, decided I didn't want to wear them, and, and so I didn't. And then it was about 20 years or so that passed, and I decided, you know what, I, I think I need to go back to the eye doctor. Didn't anybody know, anybody like me, you're like, I should probably go back. It's been a few decades. And, and so I, I went and, uh, a few years ago. And I went and, uh, and I did the test. In fact, I want to try it with you right now. Just kind of read this out loud if you can. E. e. You guys are pretty good. Let's go a little lower. You guys got 20, 20 vision. Let's just go down here. Okay, let's go down here. Give your neighbor your money. That's what it says. I'm just kidding. It doesn't say that. I'm just kidding. You look at it like, man, I can't see that. Well, here's what I believe that God's going to touch you, and you're going to begin to see with 2020 clarity what God's going to do in these banner years. And what you could not see before, God is going to just supernaturally come upon you, and you're going to be able to see the details, the fine print, the plans that God has for you that will go along with his purpose. Come on, how many of you received that right there? You say, you know what, I want that. I want 2020 clarity in my life and in my world. So we're going to talk about for a few moments how to reimagine your future to experience God's vision for your life. Today's Groundhog's Day. How many of you ever watched that movie? Come on. I love that movie. It's great. One of my friends posted this uh, today. It's one of the quotes. I'll throw it up on my story uh, 
uh, later, but it's uh, Bill Murray. I'll give you a winter prediction. It's going to be cold, it's going to be gray, and it's going to last the rest of your life. Come on, that, don't you feel like that with winter sometimes? Isn't that true? How many of you know spring's coming? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so anyway, we'll bring it back for a moment. Groundhog's Day. Groundhog's Day 23 years ago, I reimagined a new future. At that point, I was single, and I was ready to mingle. And I imagined, what would this be like? And when I was younger, I wrote out in detail what I was believing for in a woman. She'd be godly. She'd be love Jesus. She would think I was amazing, no matter what God had to do to change her mentality, that she would, you know, to her, that I would be good looking. I, I want her to be uh, shorter than me. I want her to be a dark, complected little chica. And I just, you know, all, the, all these things I wrote out in detail. Well, 23 years ago, I got down on one knee and I asked Michelle Amy Dela Cruz, hey, baby, would you marry me? And she said yes. And then a number of months later, we'd be married. And 22 years later and five kids, come on, God has done a good work. <laughs> Don't hate, celebrate. It's good, man. It's good. And, and, but here's the deal. I had to imagine a future different than what I was currently living. I had to imagine, okay, one day I want to have babies. One day, I need a baby mama to do that, that I want to marry. I, I want a woman that's going to be godly, that's going to love me, that, that, that all these different things. And I'm, I'm believing I won't have to look up to her, and that's totally fine. I was like, God, if she's taller than me and she's who you want, that's great. But, but I don't want to have to get a running head start to give her a hug. Come on, somebody. And, uh, and so I prayed for her. I wrote it down. And, 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 and then when I met Michelle, and, and she had written some things down, and we wrote down a vision of what we were believing for in a spouse. How many of you know that if I wanted to just have a wife, I can have a wife. The Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing, receives favor. Everybody say favor. Favor from the Lord. But I didn't want just a wife. I wanted the right wife, the one for me. And that's what God gave me. Why did he give that? Because I reimagined what my life could be like different. I said, okay, I'm not imagining being single any longer. I'm imagining what it's going like, to be like to be married and have children and do men and all these things that God had placed in the inside of my heart. And that's a word for somebody like, you don't just want a man. You want tall, dark, and handsome with a six pack and a good job. Come on. You mind, if you're believing, you might as well believe big. What I'm saying is this. Be specific with the vision that God's placed in the inside of your heart. Begin to imagine a preferred future. You see, uh, Caleb in the scripture, Joshua and Caleb were, were two of the spies that had a different spirit. And they were uh, with the people of God going to the promised land. They had to wait, as you'll recall, for uh, uh, 40 years for the naysayers and the critics to die off before they could go in. Caleb went in the promised land and he said, you know what? I've been waiting to raise my family here. This is the land that God had for me. He said, I'm 85. I'm still full of passion. Now today, give me this mountain. And he believed God for what he had. Can I encourage you? You're not too old. And it's time for you to imagine a future that is blessed, that is favored. It's time to dream again, build some new walls and trust God. Colonel Sanders, man, he didn't even create Kentucky Fried Chicken, the chain that we know it until he was 62 years old. Don't you love Colonel Sanders? Come on. I heard someone say before, we are so poor, we used to go to Kentucky Fried Chicken and lick other people's fingers. It was that good. Come on, isn't that gross? Anyway. <laughs> oh, we're going to say some things today. Come on, somebody. So today, Groundhog's Day, that movie, let's go back to it for a moment. It was a movie about the same day over and over again. You are not called to, sing, sing, uh, to live the same day over and over again. You are creative, made in the image of the creator. You are called and chosen, anointed and appointed. And today, God is going to birth fresh, fresh vision into your life, uh, fresh vision into your marriage for your children. You don't need to have a midlife crisis and walk away and start over. Oh, I need a new family. I need to do this. No, no. You just need new vision and saying, God, do a quick work, a great work, and an over over these 52 days, I believe that God is going to give you visions and dreams that will take your life years into the future. You're about to see what's always been in your heart. God's going to accomplish his plans. You will have your banner years in Jesus' name. Come on. Give God some praise today. Thank him for it. 21 days to a new habit, 90 days to a new lifestyle. Over these next 52 days, God's going to do some great things. God does everything according to a pattern based on the principles of his word. And when we pattern our lives after those principles, we are guaranteed success or our banner years. 
Not trouble-free years, not easy years, but the greatest years of our lives. we got to allow revival to take place on the inside of us. We need to reimagine a preferred future. In other words, you need to get a vision for the future that God has for you. Let me say it again. You're not too old. God has more things in store for you. It doesn't matter uh, who has walked away from you. They do not determine your destiny. God has called you, and he'll never walk away from you. And Jesus bought you with a price by his very own blood when he hung on a cross. You're a new creation. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're a co-heirs of the promise. You are somebody. You're called and chosen. Come on. You have the authority and the grace and the mercy of God over your life. If it's not good yet, God's not done yet. He's going to finish his work in you. Oh, Sam, you're just trying to encourage me. You bet I am with the truth of God's word. Now, let's go back to Nehemiah's story for a moment because there's some thoughts. They're going to be quick. There's 10 thoughts I want to give you. I was just reading through, and I was going to cut it down. I said, no, it's going to be a smorgasbord of goodness. So go back and listen to it on the app. Write it down and, uh, and get ready. That's some stuff that's going to help you. Steve Jobs, who uh, created you know, iPhone and a big part of Apple and all those things, once wrote this. He said, if you're working on something exciting that you really care about, you don't have to be pushed. The vision pulls you. Some of you are still struggling with the same old sin because you just haven't gotten a a bigger vision for your future. Some of you are struggling with issues in your life because you just haven't gotten a revelation yet of the thing that God wants to do in and through you. So here's what I believe today. I believe today prophetically that God is going to do a quick work, a fresh work, and a new work in your life, and that vision is going to pull you. You say, you know what? I don't want to eat those things that I ate before because I want to live longer so that I can fulfill the plan and purpose of God. So I'm not going to cooperate with the enemy to cut my life short, to steal, kill, and destroy. I'm going to honor God. You know what? I'm not going to live in sin outside of the will of God anymore. I know God still loves me and he's for me, but it's going to keep me from receiving everything that God has for me. So today, right now, I know that favor uh, can only be received and not achieved, but favor first has to be believed, and we receive it when we believe and line up our heart and our ways with God's ways, and we have a revival on the inside. That's what Nehemiah was doing. He said, God, I want to do something about these walls that are broken down, and in verse 8, he said, please remember, God, what you told your servant Moses. If you're unfaithful to me, I'll scatter you among the nations, but... Everybody say, but, but But if you return and you obey my commands and live by them, then even if you're exiled to the ends of the earth, I'll bring you back to the place I've chosen for my name to be honored. The people you rescued by your great power and strong hand are your servants. Please remember God. Nehemiah was saying, God, these are your servants. These are your people and it's your promise. And We're believing that the vision that you have, God, that you shared will come to pass. Now, here's the first thought I want to give you today. I want you to write this down. You need to build your vision around God's purposes. So often, we get a vision and say, God, we want you to be about what we're about. And God says, no, I want to change your heart so that you have my heart. Then I'll place dreams there. And as you have a desire for those dreams, I'm going to give my super on your natural, and I'll do something amazing in and through your life. Now, Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6, 10. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, what are the purposes of God? You've been placed on the planet. You're sucking oxygen for five purposes that are revealed in the scripture. They're revealed in the great commandment and the great commission. Matthew 22 says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, Uh, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Loving God is worship, that we magnify God. You can't outgive God. You worship him, your time, your talent, your treasure. It's your reasonable act as a follower of Jesus to give all of yourself for the kingdom of God. It's worship. You cannot outgive God, and uh, and, uh, we're magnifying his name. Then it says, love your neighbor as yourself. Can I just say, some of you in here, you hate yourself, and some of you religious people think the Bible tells us to hate ourselves. That's not what the scripture says. Jesus even said, love other people in the same way that you love yourself. You should be thankful that you're good looking, that you're favored, that you are somebody, that you're called and chosen by God. Confident, not in the flesh, but in who God called you to be, because you're not going 
going to love other people unless you appreciate who God has called you to be. That's why Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. And what that is, <clears throat> excuse me, is that is service. God wants you to be a minister of his grace. Save people, serve people, that you minister to, to others. And then there's the great commission where we're on mission with Jesus and for the kingdom of God. It says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and I'll be with you to the end of the age. God wants you to be a member of his family. That's fellowship. You can't do life alone. Baptizing them into the family of God. God wants you to model his character. We say it like this, growing people change. That's discipleship, that we're becoming more like Jesus as a part of the Great Commission. Go and uh, make disciples. Evangelism, that we're called to reach people. And it's, it's this, God wants you to be a messenger of his love. And we say it like this around here, found people, find people. So here's the deal. You can't do life alone. It's the purposes of God. Growing people, they change. We need to keep becoming more like Jesus. Save people, serve people. Found people, find people. You can't outgive God. Live a life of worship. What puts it all together is that we honor up, we honor down, and we honor all around, and we treat everybody as, uh, as if they're made in the image of Almighty God. So in other words, God's purpose for your life and my life are the same. His plans are the same in that they're good, but the details of our destiny are different. You've been gifted. Your cha you, uh, God has uh, channeled his blessing and his grace gifts and his favor over your life. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You are unique. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and just tell him that right now. You are unique. Come on. Give him some love. You are unique. And it's true. We're all different. And you're talented and well able. And God wants to do something great in and through you. And it begins by you saying, you know what, God? I'm going to get a vision around your purposes. That's what Nehemiah said. God, this is what you said. So we want to do what you said. Now bless your people. Here's the second thing. He said, oh, Lord, please hear my prayer. So you need to pray about. Whatever you're praying about, you're depending on God for. Whatever you're not praying about, you're depending on yourself for. And that's where frustration, discouragement, depression, and fear comes from because you need to stop trying to fix it, and you need to faith it, and you need to trust God. And you know your faith in it when you say, God, I'm placing it in your hands. I'm giving it to you. I can't rebuild these walls by myself, but a moment of favor can change everything. So I'm praying, and I'm believing. And Nehemiah said, Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Grant me success, favor today by making me favorable, uh, making the king favorable to me. Everybody say favor. Put it in his heart to be kind to me. Now, the Bible says that, that uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we live by believing and not by seeing. We live by faith and uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. God can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask, think, or imagine. But you need to pray today and believe that God can. Well, Sam, I'm in debt. Well, in these banner years, we're believing there are years of favor and freedom. And the year of Jubilee is uh, where all debts were erased, prisoners were set free, land went back to its original owner, favor, what should have taken a long time. God says, you know what? I'm going to do it now in an amazing way. And can I just encourage you, since you're praying anyway, you might as well pray big. Jabez said, God, would you bless me indeed and enlarge my territory and keep me from harm? If God answered that joker in the Old Testament. God is no respecter of persons. He can answer you. It's time to get your faith up. Believe again that God is well able. He can heal you. He can restore you. He can do a great work in and through your life. Vision, when it gets on the inside, ignites a fire. It awakens destiny. It's a preferred future that you'd like to live. And if you want to live uh, in vision, you need to pray and believe God. Now listen to what else happened. Number, num, number three, you need to be willing to risk. Nehemiah, early the following spring, in the month of Nisan, during the 20th year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was serving the king as wine. I had never appeared sad in his presence. So the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You don't, you don't look sick to me. You must be troubled. Then I was terrified. 
Now, some scholars say that the reason he was terrified was because when you came into the king's presence, if you weren't happy, you better fake it till you make it because if you upset the king, not only could you be banished from his courts, but you could be banished from this world. And so he was taking a big risk by allowing the fact that he was burdened to come before the king. See, if you're going to do something great with your life before God, it is going to require faith in your life, and faith is spelled R-I-S-K. You're going to have to take a risk and say, I don't know it all, I don't understand it all, but you know what? I'm going to take a step. And I did that Groundhog's Day 23 years ago, got down on one knee. My wife was tired. She was confused. Because uh, she had to do studies. She's like, what's going on? And I'm thinking, why am I doing this right now? I had so many other ideas, and they were much better, but I'm asking her now. And I said, baby, would you marry me? And she's like, what? Are you, are you asking me right now? Is this really like happening? She kind of looked at me funny. And eventually, she said yes. Come on, somebody. It was a good day. It was a good thing. I had to be willing to risk. I had to take. Now, truth be told, we already had our wedding kind of planned out, but I still had to be willing to risk. And ask her in the same way, you got to be willing to risk. Groundhog's Day, 23 years later, God still wants to touch some people and bless them that are willing to risk and ask something big, who's going with me? Come on, a flood of favor, a breakthrough season. God wants to, he has more in store for you. There's a miracle in your mouth. There's something that God wants to bring out of you and do in and through you. He was terrified, but he's willing to risk. Number four. Just a couple of thoughts I got when I was reading uh, uh, this week. Uh, he, he took that step. And number four, he thought generationally. So often when we think of our dreams, we think very selfishly. God wants you to start thinking generationally, where it's not just about you. The dream that we're talking about, we're going to build a building. But more than that, we're building an ark for the saving of generations. And we're going to have a great playground, and we're going to have all these things. And you know what? My babies, they're too big for that. But someone's babies, uh, 25 of my grandchildren are going to enjoy it. Come on, I prophesy that. And, and I told my kids, at least five apiece. Come on. And... and and, and other, other children. And you know what? They may be spiritual children. I don't know, but I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for the generations. And I love what Nehemiah said. He replied, long live the king. How can I not be sad? The city where my ancestors is buried in ruins and the, uh, the gates have been destroyed by fire. The king said, well, how can I help you? With a prayer to the God of heaven, I replied, if it pleases the king, and if you're pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. Meaning I have a generational commitment to do something that's going to outlast me, that's going to outlive me, but it's going to touch people for the kingdom of God. He said, you know what? I want to rebuild some walls. I was blessed because of this heritage. Now I'm going to give it to the future. I can't take it with me, but I can't send it on ahead. And I'm going to believe God to do something through my life generationally. Here's another thought. You need to accept the limitations of a vision. A lot of times people say, you know, you can do anything. No, you can't. You're like, I thought you, I'm not a motivational speaker. Motivation comes from within. I'm just encouraging you. People say, you can do anything you want to do. If that were true, I would be a 6-5 NBA all-star worth about $100 million right now. I wanted to play basketball in the NBA. It did not work out. Listen, I can't do anything I want to do. But I can do exactly what God has called me to do because he's gifted me and he's qualified me for his purpose, which is unique to me and unique for you. The details of your destiny are different. The purpose is the same. The vision comes into detail. His plans are good, but there's details to the destiny that God wants to download into your life so that you can do something great. But you have to accept there are some limitations. There's certain things that you cannot do because you're called and chosen by God to do a great work. You used to waste time over here. You used to waste time over there. But now you say, I have, I have uh, whatever number of years left, I need to be intentional. So I'm going to accept, accept the limitations over my life. I'm not complaining about it. It's not burdensome. I'm focused because broken focus will keep us from our destiny. But when we come with 2020 clarity in these banner years, then we can be focused and we can receive what God wants us to have. Verse 6, the king with the queen sitting beside him asked, how long will you be gone? When will you return? After I told him how long I'd be gone, the king agreed to my request. The king didn't make it open-ended. Go as long as you want, 
have whatever you want. No, no. It was very specific, and you need to be the same about the vision that God's birthing on the inside of you. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. Today, if you have a sin problem, your issue is a vision problem. You are settling for the scraps when God wants to give you the feast. And if you would just raise your level uh, of what you see today, and you would look beyond and reimagine a preferred future. I don't have to be this way. I don't have to be an addict. I don't have to be broken. I don't have to be burdened. I don't have to be depressed. I can be what God has called me to be. I can accomplish these great things. God's placed a vision here. I'm going to believe, and I'm going to trust in him. Without vision, people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. Number six, I said to the king, if it pleases the king, let me have letters addressed to the governors of the province, province west of the Euphrates, instructing them to uh, let me travel safely through their territories on the way to Judah. And please give me a letter addressed to Asaph, the manager of the king's forest, instructing him to give me timber and all that I need. And he went through this and he said, I need these letters. But he knew that it need, needed to be written down. Now, you can Google and you can read some more stories. And for time's sake, I'm not going to share it. But studies show that people that write down their goals are more likely to accomplish them by a significant rate. You make more money. You accomplish more things. When you get it out of here, get it out of here, and you write it down to here. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 says this. Write the vision, the revelation or the dream, and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. I want to encourage you to write it down. We've watched in our church God do amazing things. We have written goals from Decade of Destiny that we started eight years ago, and we have watched God do amazing things. It's not all there yet. It may take 20 years, but we're writing it down, and we're making it plain, so together we can run with it, and we can trust God. In 1 Chronicles 28, 19, when King David was seeking God's will for the temple, he said, all this I have in writing from the hand of the Lord upon me. And he gave me understanding in all the details of the plan. God wants to give you detailed visions, uh, vision that you will move forward into your future. Not just, well, I hope it happens. Not just, will there be a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? If you're believing in 2020 and 2021 that you're going to be debt-free in Jesus' name, then get a budget. If you're believing uh, that God wants you to give you a spouse in 2020 and 21, then come on, start being the person that God has called you to be and start running after God in the way that he's called you to. And then you'll look and see the person running beside you and God will say, here you go. And he'll bless you in that way. You do your part, God will do his part. Listen, here's the deal. We cannot without God. God will not without us. Let's say it again. Rewind. We cannot without God. God will not. Everybody say will not. He will not without us. Number seven, don't allow your emotions to determine your timing. So Nehemiah, he arrived in Jerusalem, and three days later, he slipped out during the night, taking only a few others with me, he said. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart for Jerusalem. Goes on to say that he went he inspected the different gates and the different walls that had been collapsed. In verse 16, the city officials did not know. Everybody say, did not know? Come on, say it again. Did not know? Did not know I had been out there or what? I was doing. There's vision that I'm not sharing yet for our church that will come to pass because we got to build the building first and do some other things. But it, at the right time, listen, burden does not necessitate timing. Just because you feel it and God's reveal it doesn't mean it's time for you to move on it just yet. You need wisdom. Wisdom is anointed common sense. Wisdom is knowing what God wants you to do and choosing to do it. Keep the dream of being a star, but go practice. Keep the dream for college, but go graduate high school first. Keep the dream of owning a business, but go apprentice and learn how it's done before you start it. Keep the dream of marriage, but become a healthy single person first. Vision is not a pipe dream. It's not a wish. It's a faith picture that gets on the inside of you, followed by strategic steps that God will give you to fulfill the dream that he has in your life. Habakkuk 2.3 says this, the vision is for a future time. It describes the end, and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently. 
It will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Number eight, make it understandable. Make it understandable. Listen to what Nehemiah said. He said, now I said to them, you know very well what trouble we're in. Jerusalem lies in ruins. Its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us. Everybody say, let us. Come on, out loud together. Everybody say, let us. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. The old acronym is KISS. Keep it simple, stupid, or keep it simple, someone, or however you want to say it. We need to keep it simple. He said, listen, here's the deal. Jerusalem's in ruins. Gates have been destroyed by fire. It's time to rebuild. We're putting an end to this disgrace. And he rallied the people of God. And within 52 days, God did a quick work, a great work, an amazing work in and through his life. And I'm telling you, it is the process of revival and reimagining a preferred future. We'll talk about rebuilding next week. But if you will make it plain and make it understandable and not one day maybe and and all these complicated things and say, you know what? We're going to build a great church. It's going to be an ark for the saving of Jesus generations. We're going we're gonna to depopulate hell and populate heaven. We're going to minister to people and set them free. We're going to build a building in the middle of another cornfield, and God's going to do a work there. And But we're not stopping there. We're going to keep building Jesus' church. Very simple. Rally with me. And in 52 days, how I many you know God can do something amazing? But what about in your life? Sometimes it's easy to have faith for something big and someone else, and not for ourselves. Can I encourage you? As you write the dream and you make it plain and understandable, begin to share it with the right people. Share it with others. That's what Nehemiah did. He waited just the right time. He said, this is what's in my heart, because it takes teamwork to make the dream work. Then I told them about the gracious hand of God that had been upon me, about my conversation with the king. And then they replied, come on, let's rebuild the wall. See, the right people in your world, they'll get around you and say, come on, let's believe God for that thing. Let's believe God for that new future. Man, you, it, the, best, the rest of your life will be the best of your life in Jesus' name as you commit your heart to Jesus and you trust him in every area of your life. And here's my last thought from this chapter today. You gotta go for it. Too many people, they're all talk. Oh man, one day we're gonna do this. One day. One day is code language for never. That's all it is. One day we're going to Hawaii. Oh, yeah? When are you on? It's been 30 years you've been saying that. One day I'm going to go back to school. Okay, when are you applying? You know, one day, you know, one day my marriage is going to be great. Okay, so when, when are you going to start praying for your spouse? When are you going to go get the help that you need? One day can be code language for never. How about we say today? I can't fulfill my dream in a day but I certainly can take a step towards it. So today, here's my challenge for you. That you look at the broken walls in your life and in your world. And don't get discouraged. Don't have fear. You are birthed for the purposes and the plans of Almighty God. You're on the planet on purpose and for a purpose. God wants to reveal the details of your destiny. And and, and I love this. When Sanballat, Tobiah, and Gershom, the Arab, heard of our plan, they scoffed at us. What are you doing? Are you rebelling against the king? They asked, and I replied, the God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding the wall, and you'll you'll have no share in that. Matthew 28, Jesus said, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. I want you to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You teach them to do everything I've commanded, and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And if Jesus is with us, and God is on our side, there's no dream that's too big. There's no mountain that's too high. There's no wall that's too broken that God can't restore, that God can't heal, that God can't make new. I want you to stand to your feet. Give God five seconds of praise today and thank him for the dream. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his goodness. Not a golf clap, a celebration. Come on. That dream that God has given you will come to pass in Jesus' name. These are your banner years favor and freedom and God will have the final word. Do you receive that today? So I want you to do something. 
This week, I gave you a lot of thoughts. I want you to take, and we had this in your program, your notes, spiritual life, physical life, emotional life, financial life, relational life. I want you to write your epitaph. We watched last week a man in the prime of life, his daughter and many others, Kobe Bryant, and that tragic accident that just impacted all of us in, in different ways, whether you're a sports fan or not. It's tragic. One of the reasons that the world responded in the way that it did is because when you see someone that you know and they pass, it reminds you of your own humanity. And that there's a 100% chance that you're not getting out of this life alive. But there's a 100% opportunity by the grace of God that you can experience more than this life forever and ever. God has placed eternity in the human heart. He has details for your destiny and your future. I want to encourage you, don't wait to the end of your life for other people to write things about you. You begin to write your story. As I watched uh, uh, the game where they're honoring Kobe, he had written a documentary. In that documentary, uh, he talked about his life. So he was talking about his life and what he would be remembered for and all those things in his own words. People were watching that and I said, what a beautiful picture. That's what I want to do. Not make a documentary. I don't need a video, but, but I wanted to say, you know what? This I'm going to live my life, the few years that I'm alive. Here's what you need to hear. Revival starts in me. And it continues as I reimagine and live out God's vision for my life. Hey, thanks for tuning in to our online experience. It's our prayer that you experience the freedom and life that only God has to offer. If you have a prayer request or a question, go ahead and drop us a line. Email us at hope at freedom.life. And if this message blessed you, share it on social media, send it to a friend, be a hope dealer. And again, thanks for tuning in. And we believe in your life, the best is still yet to come.